What's up, Guardians? Welcome to a, another episode of Short Pause Presents Tower Talk. I'm Ben on the other side of the mic. That's Brent. This is, of course, our Destiny-focused video discussion series, if, you, if you're if you new to the program. So we've taken all of our Destiny 2 talk uh, and centralized it in, in one location here with Tower Talk. So any and everything you want to hear from us regarding Destiny, this is the place to be. Uh, so if you like what we do, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, leave comments, all that fun stuff. We, uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Brent, we've got another... Uh, the heaping of Destiny news to talk about this evening, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, buddy. I'm ready to talk some Destiny 2. We've got some big events happening this week. Let's get into it. Yeah, so first thing we got to talk about, Brent, new roadmap came out a couple days ago. Um, you know, uh, the the dev team sent out their, their latest development roadmap, added in some new things for, the, uh, for Season 3, for this current season of content, and kind of gave us a hint at, at some things that are that are to come here. And interestingly enough, Brent, we don't have to wait too long for our next update, which I was a little bit surprised by. So here's uh, here's game director Christopher mm-hmm. Barrett. Now that Warmind has officially launched, we're ready to add some additional details to the upcoming roadmap. There are a lot of eagerly awaited updates that are scheduled to arrive in September, and we'll tell you more about those in the coming months, including our plans for year two of Destiny 2. But this summer won't just be playing the waiting game. We'll be delivering the prestige modes you've been waiting for, bringing back bounties, providing quality of life fixes, and more. In addition, we're launching a new seasonal event called Solstice of Heroes, where Guardians will celebrate their accomplishments and, of course, earn sweet new rewards. Mm. So, that is our lead into the roadmap, Brent. And the roadmap looks as follows. So we've got Year 1 Season 3, which we're in the midst of right now. The first item on the list is the Warmind update, the first update of Season 3. That's, of course, deployed. We don't need to go through that. We've already we've already talked about that and given our impressions on Warmind, which if you haven't, watch our previous episodes of Tower Talk, so you're up to speed on all that stuff. Uh, now, this is the interesting one here. So the 1.2.1 update is coming May 29th, so that's a week from Tuesday. We're going to get our next update of Season 3, and it's titled Rallies. And there's three items on this list, and there's three big ones, Brent. First off, Faction Rallies Improvements. Mm-hmm. Secondly, something they're calling Crucible Labs. And thirdly, exotic armor sandbox changes. Mm. So, um, not now I had obviously we've seen exotic armor sandbox changes on the on the roadmap here. I don't know about you, but I didn't really expect them to come this quick. You know, I thought that they spent a lot of time with the uh, exotic masterworks and, uh, and exotic weapons. They just did a whole big deal on that. But to see exotic armor sandbox changes pop up quickly, I was I was a little bit surprised by that. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, design lead Derek Carroll chimed in with this. I can already hear you asking what is Crucible Labs, and I'm glad you want to know more. Update 1.2.1 will include a new feature intended to give you a peek behind the scenes and a louder voice in our creative process. Crucible Labs will give every player of Destiny 2 access to experimental PvP content. We'll then have a chance to solicit your feedback to guide our final iterations. You'll learn more about Labs before launch. For today, with it making an appearance on the roadmap, I wanted to give you a preview of our goals. More to come on this soon. So. Crucible Labs are right around the corner, and, and by all accounts, Brent, this sounds like some type of a, of a PvP test server, mm-hmm. which which a lot of games have, Overwatch, Battlefield, and a lot of these big-time shooters have these kind of preview um, states that, that gamers can experience their, their games in before it actually goes official, give feedback on it, and that kind of stuff. So many people clamoring for something like that in the Crucible in, in Destiny 2 here, mm-hmm. and just from from what it sounds like with with Derek there sounds like that's what we're going to get with Crucible Labs. So Brent talk to me about this update man. Faction rallies improvements, Crucible Labs, exotic armor sandbox changes. What uh what stands out to you here? Uh obviously faction rally changes uh you know I want to see what kind of how these are going to play out differently, how the reward system, the progression system is going to work. Uh, I, I really like faction rallies. I like the gear that we've gotten from that. I like the the armor set, the ornaments that we got the last time around. Uh, you always get some good weapons there. So I'll be curious to see what kind of changes are coming to that. Um, the, the, the the lab sounds really interesting because, like you mentioned, this is something that you see like in, in PUBG right now. You can test out different uh, the new map before it comes out. But this is mm-hmm. going to allow players to try out these new modes that, that Pu- Bungie is, 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 is testing. We can provide the feedback and tweak them so these modes are what the community wants, what they really want to spend time playing. I always like it when developers reach out to the community, the fans of the games that you know uh, who buy their games, and give them the opportunity to really get into the development process of the PvP side of things to make things uh, more unique, find some new modes. I mean, it's it's cool how you can, you know, just do one of these servers. 
and then somebody has an idea and they pitch it to Bungie and then they implement it and then boom, you have this whole new mode that Bungie might not have been planning, but they get the mm-hmm. feedback from the community who understands the mechanics of the games, how the game plays, what makes it exciting, and they can implement that and boom, we have something new and fresh to play. So I really like the idea of the Crucible Labs. Um, you know, And now when it comes to the exotic uh, uh, armor sandbox changes, like you said, it's interesting to see that it's going to be dropping here relatively quick in two weeks because mm. we haven't gotten nearly as much information about that as we did the exotic weapon sandbox changes. We found mm. out a bunch of stuff over multiple weeks up to launch. We don't have a whole lot of information on the exotic armor right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you uh, what do you what do you think they're looking at for that? Like what 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 would you like to see them change with the exotic armor? <sighs> You know, you know the, the thing with the exotic armors that we we were talking about before we went live here is just some of the you know some of the gear that's out there right now have some pretty cool perks or abilities that make them really really unique and useful in certain situations. Mm-hmm. So I mean I don't know what more they can do with some of the things other than to maybe exaggerate them, much like they've done the uh, the exotic weapons. Uh, or maybe they can make your, you mm-hmm. know, when you get the mobility perk, maybe your guy moves even faster or, or you, you know, you, your um, regeneration is quicker. You know, I don't know what they could do outside of that. That's why I'm curious to see, you know, they're going to have to talk about it this week on this yeah. week at Bungie. They're going to have to get into it in depth to kind of give us an idea of what it is. Because with as, as prominent as the, the weapons pass was, the exotic weapons pass, you got to think they got to have big plans for the armor, right? Yeah. And um, we'll talk about it in a second here, but they've actually split split this update up into two separate updates. So mm-hmm. there's going to be the first half of the exotic armor updates coming on May 29th. And there's going to be another one coming down the line in, in uh, assumedly the next update. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm just curious what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to add more perks. I don't know if, like you said, maybe they add an additional, uh, you know, a, a ability buff in there with your with your recovery, speed, resilience, you know, mm-hmm. whatever whatever they're planning to do with that. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the armor in the game right now, the exotic armor, has really cool abilities like the Orpheus rigs, <coughs> like the Ophidian aspect, like these these um, exotics that, that we use a lot. And, yeah, so I'm really curious to see because they – just completely revamped the weapons when they did the when they did the weapon pass. Right. So imagine if they did something similar to the armor, like how much that's going to change that aspect of uh, of your build. So very very curious to see. <clears throat> and you kind of hit on it right there, Brent. But we don't we don't they Bungie hasn't talked anything about exotic armor sandbox changes. They haven't talked anything about Crucible Labs. They haven't talked anything about faction rallies improvements. So this next this week at Bungie this week, mm-hmm. man, that thing's gonna be loaded with all of, <laughs> with all of this stuff that they're gonna have to go over because this is dropping on Tuesday and they haven't even begun to talk about this yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so so interesting there. Now I don't know if you've if you've heard this, Brent, but there's been a few things that uh, I don't know if they're on the um, the 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 Destiny servers. I don't know how people get access to this stuff, but word on the street mm-hmm. is, you know. The Bungie has wanted to do some some different things with faction rallies in season three, and from what it sounds like, it sounds like each faction could, is going to potentially have their own exotic emote, their own oh, wow. exotic ornament, and <clears throat> this is the big one: their own exotic catalyst. So, a so certain guns like the graviton lance, for instance, uh-huh. which doesn't currently have an exotic catalyst, I believe when faction rallies go live on Tuesday, May 29th again. There will be the exotic catalyst will be available from one of the factions, and you'll have to do something to get it from them. So it's really going to change how you how you strategize your pledge to, to which group you pledge to, mm-hmm. because they're going to have some legitimate items that you're really going to want to get your hands on. And it's in in addition to the the prize weapons and all that kind of stuff. And we don't know what they're going to do in terms of the actual gameplay. They mentioned possibly looking at some different gameplay aspects with the faction rallies as well. But it sounds like faction rallies are going to be far more meaningful in Season 3 than they have been. And, and they've been a lot of fun up to this point, but it sounds like they're going to be <clears> stepped <throat> up to the next level. What do you think about that? That all sounds really good. You know what I would love to see? And I was just thinking about this as you were talking about mm-hmm. faction rallies. They want to make things more interesting. How cool would it be if they took faction rallies and implemented it into, uh, into the Crucible, much like Splatoon does when they have Team This versus Team That? Wouldn't that be cool if like they implemented Crucible with the faction is where if you jump in, I'm always going, you know, it's a full team of future war cult versus a full team of, of new monarchy. 
I think that'd be awesome if they found a way to work that in. I mean, you know, that would be something I would love to see them do for these changes to mm-hmm. the faction rallies. I mean, I don't, I doubt that's the case. I just think that would be something that would really blow a lot of people's minds and would really make faction rallies even better. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty neat. And they could even uh, reward you much in the same way they do the Iron Banner. Mm-hmm. So for a, for a win, you get five tokens. For a, a loss, you get two tokens. So you're still building right. up tokens for your faction. You're still able to to turn you know what packages in eventually, but it gives you that extra incentive to try and to try and get that win to get those extra tokens. So yeah, so that, so I mean, something like that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so <clears throat> now the the May 29th update, not the only update on here, Brent. We now have an update that's just titled July currently, mm-hmm. and that's not to say that there won't be any more updates in season three. This is the only other one that's listed in here right now. But there's a lot of time between now and September. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few more updates that slide in here for Season 3. But right now we're looking at July, and here's the stuff on here. Solstice of Heroes Seasonal Event, as Christopher Barrett mentioned. Bounties. Expansion 1 and 2 Raid Layer Prestige. So this is a huge feature that a lot of people have been waiting for, getting that prestige version of the Raid Layers. PC Clan Text Chat. Year 1 Triumphs and more Exotic Armor Sandbox changes, as we alluded to earlier. So just the fact that they're splitting this apart makes it seem like this is going to be a significant update to this exotic armor in so much that they couldn't get it all in one pass. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how they're going to split it. Maybe they have, um, yeah, I, I don't know what what their plan is with that. Maybe they're actually going to do two separate passes on the armor. Maybe there's one set of updates they're going to do on May 29th. There's another set of updates they're going to do for the armor in July. Don't know. But uh, what stands out to you in this, in this July uh, list, man? Um, man, there's a lot of good stuff on there, but, uh, <laughs> I'd have to say, I like, I like the idea of bounties. Bounties has always been uh, something I've enjoyed doing. That's again, mm-hmm. more grind, making me go out and do stuff, get me the stuff I need to, you know, either upgrade weapons or, or possibly give me a new quest line or something along those lines, anything that'll just keep me busy. So bounties is obviously a really big thing. And then, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the other item would be, uh, the, obviously, the expansion raid layers, uh, expansion one and two raid layer. And then I'm more curious about the Solstice of Heroes seasonal event. Mm-hmm. I want to know what that's more. Well, obviously, we won't know about that until a bit closer to it. But then, uh, obviously, man, uh, year one triumphs uh, is one of the big things that stands out <laughs> here, man. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, just to go over one more time what, what Barrett said about this. We're launching a new seasonal event called Solstice of Heroes, where Guardians will celebrate their accomplishments and, of course, earn sweet new rewards. Mm. So, uh, clearly, the Year One Triumphs ties into the Solstice of Heroes somehow, right. much like uh, much like <clears throat> Age of Triumphs did in, in Destiny 1, where it kind of celebrated your accomplishments in that game, gave you a record book to go through and, and unlock some new stuff, You know, in, in addition to all the other stuff that the Age of Triumphs added at the end of Destiny 1. So if this is anything like that, if we get a Solstice of Heroes uh, event and and you know it ties in with our Year One Triumphs and we earn new rewards, that that's the the interesting part of this though, Brent. He mentions right there, earn sweet new rewards. Hmm. Now in the past, some of these Destiny events have been criticized for their lack of of any meaningful loot that they that they've added. You know, something like uh, uh, the Dawning or the Festival of the Lost or something like that. While fun mm-hmm. to partake in some of the activities, they weren't necessarily like lighting the community on fire with the loot that they offered. Right. But Christopher Barrett <laughs> is specifically using this phrase, earn sweet new rewards. Mm-hmm. So what do you think of when you when you hear that, man? I mean, it could be anything. Weapons, you know, ornaments, uh, new gear. I mean, there's, there's there's a whole lot of ways they could take this. And the fact mm-hmm. that, you know, and the idea that this being tied to the to the year one triumphs, I mean, that's really, really cool. I mean, that's going to be very rare stuff if it is indeed, in, you know, co- uh, in cahoots with the, uh, the, the, the year one triumphs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you said it, man, the year one triumphs, that's the thing that I zeroed in on. So some of my fondest gaming memories of this generation – have been with Destiny, and they've all been tied to the moments of triumph. Mm-hmm. So whether it's uh, you know defeating Skolas in Destiny One, whether it's uh, you know getting through the the Vault of Glass and and uh, Crota's End on on hard mode, or uh, the Season Two moments of triumph, besting the Oryx raid on hard, <laughs> which at the at the eleventh hour. I mean, these are like some some like big time moments that uh, that I will uh, cherish from this generation, and they were all specifically as a result of trying to earn these triumphs in Destiny. So I think we can assume that you know raid completions, raid layer completions, uh, you know maybe some type of a of a nightfall, but all like the end game activities, the um, 
escalation protocol. Like I think we can, we it's a pretty safe bet that that kind of stuff is going to be on the list here. So mm -hmm. we've got some work to do, my friend, before September to get these to get these year one triumphs knocked out. So there's still a lot of the end game that we've yet to experience yeah. in Destiny, especially after after the War Mind expansion. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, some exciting <laughs> stuff coming up in July. Now the final part of this roadmap, and I want to I want to bring your attention to this first, Brent. So well, this is what they're calling year two season one dropping in September. If you remember on the last roadmap update, they called this season four. So no longer are they calling this season four. They're calling it year two, season one. What do you make oh, of that? Wow. <laughs> they ran out of content content ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I think they're just trying to make this a, a clean slate. I mean, obviously you look at what's going on here in season one of year two, gear collections, records, weapon slot changes, weapon randomization, new gameplay modes, and more uh, obviously yet to be revealed. I think mm -hmm. they're going to treat this like, hey, look, this is year two. Year one is behind us. Uh, you know, we've stumbled out of the gate. We've done what we could to fix it. But year two, season one, it's a fresh slate. It's a fresh start for what is ultimately going to be a different Destiny game once this thing mm -hmm. drops. I've got I've got something interesting to, to ask you about this. Mm -hmm. um, so I was watching... Watching a video by Rick Kakis. He's uh, he makes a lot of Destiny videos that I, uh, that I like to watch. Um, but he was going over the roadmap, and he made he made this interesting um, he made this interesting point here. So with this no longer being season four, but being year two, season one, Brent, if you go back to Destiny one, when we got the Taken King at the start of year two, you know, fundamentally changed Destiny, and the Taken King was the only update we got up until the next year when Rise of Iron released. So it was basically a year. You know, the April update was in there, and that, that wasn't an official DLC. It was just a, a standard update to the game, and that added some new some new stuff, some new content to Destiny to kind of hold us over. But by and large, between the Taken King and Rise of Iron, there was a year period there where there were no new expansions. There was nothing but, uh, but the Taken King from there until Rise of Iron. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was understandable. The Taken King was a huge update. It fundamentally changed the game, like I said. But with Destiny 2, you know, one of the things we talked about uh, before the game even came out was this want to um, kind of uh, change the way that they updated the game, change the way that they deliver content to us. Mm -hmm. So with this now being year two, season one, you'd have to assume, Brent, that there will be a, a year two, season two, right? Possibly even a year two, season right. three. And what mm -hmm. Bungie has already mentioned and what they've set a precedent for is that when they change those seasons, those seasons come along with a DLC content update. So, with this now being year two, season one, does this now mean we're looking at a, a year two in which we are going to get another piece of DLC or multiple pieces of DLC? And is maybe Warmind a preview of what's to come with Vicarious Visions taking the helm on, on Warmind? So you have to assume if they headed the <clears throat> development on Warmind, this gave Bungie proper a lot of time to put forth into this into the September update, into mm -hmm. the September DLC. And you gotta imagine that now that Vicarious Visions has finished up Warmind, they get back into the lab and they work on their next piece of downloadable content, which we'll assumedly see at some point in year two. What do you think of that? Man, that if that's the case, then we're gonna get a lot more content than we ever got with Destiny mm -hmm. One. And we're going to get it at a at a higher frequency than we got in Destiny One. And that's just going to make people very, very happy, man. I mean, that's the one thing we always complain about with Destiny 1 was the frequency of DLC packs, uh, uh, new content. And the, and what you're mentioning here, this just indicates that, hey, look, they're serious about making sure we have stuff to do. And, you know, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a pretty safe assumption, right? That if they're labeling this Season 1, this is going to at least be a Season 2 mm -hmm. at, at some point. I think that's a that's a pretty safe assumption. So I, I think that's uh, that's very interesting to to keep our eye on. Obviously, the September update going to be a huge update, and you mentioned the stuff in there, Brent. Gear collections, records. Also interesting that records listed in September, but year one triumphs listed in July. So I'm I'm curious how they're going to, going to track that if it's not going to be via a record book. Like how are they going to do it with the triumphs there? Because because they have separated records from the triumphs. Um, then obviously weapon slot changes, weapon randomization, new gameplay modes, misses all stuff that we can't wait to get our hands on, and it, it's going to be a, a huge update come September. So mm -hmm. a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff to look forward here, dude, throughout Season 3 and into the beginning of, of Year 2, and I can't wait to see what they uh, what they fire at us in the, oh, yeah. in the coming months here. Um, all right, so moving on from there, let's get into this week at Bungie. So some interesting stuff we got to talk about in here. First and foremost, Bungie addressed progression. 
in in the game right now, and I think it's a uh, it's a topic that that we need to discuss ourselves. So this is from the update. Uh, this is from um, uh, Daniel Oceanpaw. I hope I'm saying his name right. But uh, feedback never stops. From the moment Warmind landed, we've had our eyes on the chatter surrounding all aspects of Destiny 2. One trending topic is how players reach appropriate power levels for endgame content. So this is Daniel talking here. Warmind is out. We're super excited this is in your hands now as we're able to get a bunch of excellent input on what we did well and what we still need to work on. One of those areas I'd like to talk a bit about is progression. I spoke a little bit about this before the Warmind launch, but I think one thing I could have been more clear about was that the Warmind progression system is an improvement over Curse of Osiris, but it's still not where we ultimately want to end up. It's a step down the road to make the game more in line with where we want it, but we need to make these iterations one step at a time so we can incorporate feedback and ensure we're headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So first on the docket here in, in Daniel's mind is Heroic Strikes. So Heroic Strikes are a great example of something we definitely want to keep iterating on. In the May 29th update, you'll see a small change to help make these better. So this isn't even on the roadmap, but this is coming in the May 29th update as well. Escalation Protocol Key Fragments will become a 100% drop chance from each Heroic Strike. The goal here is to make getting these fragments more accessible while also preserving the need to go play non-open world content to get the fragments. Now, um, I haven't come across any uh, of these fragments really yet, Brent, but these are what allow you to open the armor chest at the end of Escalation Protocol and allow you to get that sweet new mm -hmm. armor um, that's, uh, that's available as, as part of that activity. Heroic Strikes will be able to drop better rewards. Every three to five Heroic Strikes will drop a Legendary that can carry you up to 360 power before mods. Mm -hmm. This should better align the <clears throat> rewards of Heroic Strikes with the difficulty of the activity and help solo players have a more reliable source of upgrades. We won't have any time to make changes to what's coming on the 29th, but please let us know how you feel about these rates. It is good information to inform future updates. So uh, let me get your thoughts on this, Brent. So what, what are your thoughts on the current progression system as it sits now in destiny 2 what are your thoughts about what daniel's talking about with the heroic strikes um honestly right now at this time you know i feel like i've been ranking up at a pretty good clip i mean not too fast but i feel like uh it's it's been you know for the effort that i put in i'm getting the drops that i need and i'm, I'm ranking up slowly. i think i'm at 352 now so i'm, I'm slowly mm -hmm. making my way up I, i'm grinding away and i'm getting you know my drops where i need to get them um, I do like the fact that, you know, we're going to get more of these Escalation Protocol key fragments because eventually we're going to get to Escalation Protocol ready yeah. and we're going to want to have yeah. those things uh, for when we get there. So the fact that we're going to 100% drop on these, that's awesome because by the time we get to Escalation Protocol when we're ready for it, we'll be able to unlock these chests that are going to drop. We want to be standing there with none of these keys. So yeah. I think that's really important. And then the uh, the, the drops of, uh, you know, legendary drops that can carry up to 360 power and Heroic Strikes, I think that's great because Heroic Strikes are hard as hell. Yeah. They are not They're easy. Tough. They are very, very difficult, and I want those to be uh, uh, events that I want to get into and grind more because I like the challenge. I love the challenge, and yeah. the fact you know I, I don't need a 360 drop every time. I understand how destiny works. I understand mm -hmm. the point of a grind. So yeah. you know if you want to make it challenging, I like that it's challenging as hell. But the fact that you're going to have a you know a drop every, or every three to five strikes, you're going to get a, a drop carrying you up to 360 power. That is really, really good, and that is incentive. That's that carrot on the end of the stick. Yeah, I think I think what it comes down to is just uh, for the difficulty of that activity, like you just talked about, as it sits right now. And obviously, as we level up and get more powerful, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to go through those a little bit easier than we have been. Mm -hmm. But for the difficulty of the activity right now, the reward just doesn't match up for the effort. So right. when you finish a heroic strike and you're rewarded with a 340 like blue item, you're just like. All right, that that kind of sucks, <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's true you can you can get your milestone and then you get a much powerful engram for doing your heroic strike milestones and you can grind heroic strikes for your vanguard uh, tokens that you can eventually get some cool stuff from Zavala and whatnot. But mm -hmm. still, you want that satisfaction of when you go through like the strange terrain uh, strike and you get through that Nacris battle and yeah. you come on on the end of the end of that a victor. You're like, woo! Let me open this chest, man. See what I get after that. I just I just sweated my ass off getting through that battle <laughs> and then you go in there and you and you get a warlock bond that's 340 and you're like it's blue and you're like ah that sucks um so yeah so <laughs> they definitely need to need to improve the rewards for the heroic strike so i like what they're talking about here uh mm -hmm. um we may or may not be able to take advantage of that when it eventually hits i don't know what level we'll be at come the 29th mm -hmm. but uh you know if there's still a few levels to go to 360 
hopefully we'll be able to, to see the benefits of the heroic strikes. So Daniel continues here with some additional issues they're tracking in terms of progression. So we're tracking additional issues that don't have immediate solutions, but I want to bring up things as we're thinking and talking about. Uh, I don't currently have any potential solutions to talk about, but I want to make sure we're communicating the kinds of things we're looking at and considering. In that spirit, here are some of the top progression-related issues we're thinking about right now. How to smooth out the transition into the endgame grind once the campaign is over. Currently, there is a brick wall players seem to be running into at 345, where progression goes from fast to super frictioned. This is one of those areas we don't believe is perfect, so we're looking at how to smooth this transition out. Real quick on that, Brent, how do you feel about the 345 wall that Daniel's talking about here? Have you experienced that, or do you think that's a thing? Um, I'm sure for some people it's a thing if you're not getting into all the uh, all the mm -hmm. end game content. Um, I mean, I was there for a little bit, but I mean, like I said, I progressed past it. So I mean, I don't feel like I hit a brick wall, yeah. uh, you know, because I was in there playing, grinding. We went through, knocked out heroic strikes. We're doing all of our milestones, and maybe we just got lucky with some of the drops or some of the weapons mm -hmm. that we had, we infused them into other stuff, and you know, we were good to go. So I mean, I don't I don't remember running into too big of a brick wall. I mean, it's just it, it's a grind. Yeah. I mean, I've I've been hovering around like 350 for a little while now. You know, you, you can only get so many powerful engrams a week that you mm -hmm. can put into your stuff. And we're not yet powerful enough to do things like the uh, like the prestige activities, like the Nightfall or the uh, the Escalation Protocol. You know, we can't really realistically get into that yet. So I think that's mm -hmm. where a little bit of the issue comes in here with the 345 uh, wall that they're talking about. So basically you hit 345 because <clears throat> the blues drop up to three, 340, the mm -hmm. legendaries drop up to 340 out in the world. So with mods, you can pretty easily hit 345 after going through the campaign. Mm -hmm. But after that... It, yeah, it's it's a much tougher grind to start moving up towards that 370 level, and then we we've already heard that the 370 to 380 grind is is intense. Mm -hmm. So once once we get up to there, it's gonna it's gonna get uh, frictioned even more, as they mentioned here. So yeah, I think some type of a bridge maybe between the end of the War Mine campaign and into the Escalation Protocol activity, something that can kind of guide you through there. Because even like like we just talked about, even doing the heroic strikes, it's like. You don't you don't get much out of that as it mm -hmm. currently sits right now. You can only do the nightfall once a week. So there's there's a it's it's a little bit of a of tough sledding trying to get between the campaign and escalation protocol. So mm -hmm. I do think that that's something that they could take a look at. Uh, once milestones are complete, so Daniel continues. There aren't rewards to chase. Exotic masterworks and seasonal ranks help this problem a little bit, giving some amount of non power chase to work on once milestones are done. But these definitely aren't enough. As highlighted in the roadmap, weapon randomization and records should also help give players more to do once their milestones are done. That doesn't mean we believe this is a fully solved problem, and we're talking about other ways to help mitigate this. Brent, your thoughts on this? Do you feel that once your milestones are done, um, there's not enough to do outside of outside of that list? Well, you know, that's the thing. And, and sure, yeah, I mean, once the muscles are done, you're trying to find stuff to do. But that, I think, is where, like, the weapon quests come in. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting these other little quests that pop up that have you go through. Like, I have one right now where I have to complete five heroic strikes. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of that quest, what it is at this time. But I do have something where I have to go in there and knock these out. And I don't know what the rewards will be at the end of those. I mean, I might get a powerful yeah. weapon or a powerful piece of gear. I have no yeah. idea. But I have stuff to do where I'm like, okay, milestones are done. Cool, I'll work on my sleeper simulant quest. I gotta work on that hammer some stuff out. I've got this other quest I gotta do where mm -hmm. I gotta get five heroic strikes. I mean, there's stuff for me to do. You know, whether or not, mm -hmm. you know, after I complete it, if, if I don't get anything really good, then I'm gonna be like, okay, that kinda sucks. But at least right now, I have stuff to do outside of milestones. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat with you. I, I feel like I have a lot to do in the game right now. Like, when I log in, oftentimes I'm sitting there like, man, what, what should I do? Like, should mm -hmm. I go do this quest? Should I, uh, you know, get back into the Crucible and start start grinding up my <laughs> Valor and Glory? Like, mm -hmm. should I go that way? Should I do some more strikes and try and build up my reputation with Zavala and try and get some of these rewards that he has available? You know, should I grind my Crucible rewards? Like, do I go and do this quest I got sitting on this planet? Like, that, I feel like there's a lot that's kind of floating around in my head right now when I do log in. But uh, like you mentioned, maybe once those those quests are done and and you know that stuff kind of subsides, maybe then is is what we're looking at, where it's a little bit difficult to to find stuff to do outside of the milestones. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, right now I, I do feel like like he mentioned here, we don't even and have still have yet to find an exotic catalyst. So once you find that, that gives you something yeah. to do in terms of trying to get your exotic masterworks. And then with all of the different vendors that have ranks this season, um, you know whether it's uh, uh, Zavala or um, uh, Shax or does Ikora have uh, vendor levels as well? I'm I feel assuming like, she I feel, does. I feel like I she think, does. I think as they well. all do. Yeah. I think they all do. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so there's that, and then Anna Bray has stuff now as well. So there's like there's all these, you know, all these different levels that you can get to with these people. So there's there's definitely stuff to do there, and I'll be curious to see what else they add coming down the line. But yeah, weapon randomization and records going to be a huge, huge add add on on top of that mm-hmm. in terms of stuff to do. Uh, end game progression needs more tiers. Right now, everything gives similar sized upgrades without discrete tiers in the progression system for players to climb to. So they can tackle new activities and in turn climb to a new tier for new activities with new activities. This is something I definitely wouldn't expect a solution for pl- prior to September, but it is on our radar. So just reading that, Brent, it sounds to me like maybe they're considering uh, like the the raid uh, activity, for instance, should have a different tier of reward than say uh, a nightfall. Mm-hmm. You, you should be able to go in, do a nightfall, get a certain tier of reward, and then step your game up to the next level, do right. the prestige raid, and get. A, an item that's that much more powerful because you mm-hmm. went through an activity that's that much more difficult. So it sounds like they're maybe looking into that. The quality of the rewards don't always match the difficulty of the activity. We're seeing a lot of this feedback around raid layer rewards in particular. So talking about how to better align with the quality of reward and the difficulty of activity is something we're going to be thinking about going forward. So we just talked about this, Brent. This is mm-hmm. definitely something that they need to look at because there are some mm-hmm. piss-hard activities in Destiny 2 and they don't always reward you with the with the best stuff. So I'm glad that that's something they're they're looking into. So overall, with with the progression, man, like what's your read on it right now? Is is Destiny in a good place right now with the progression system that Warmind's introduced? I think it's I think it's going in the right direction. It's slowly mm-hmm. getting better and better. And like we talked about here, these things where they're going to say, hey, look, you know, the more difficult uh, um, uh, end game uh, or uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me. The more difficult event that you play through, the better reward you should get. That stuff, once they figure that out and once they get that implemented, that's going to make things even more rewarding. You're going to want to go in there and knock out the Nightfall. You're going to want to go in there and beat the raid. That's going to keep people going. That's the way it should be, too. The harder the event, the better the reward. It's pretty simple. Yeah. And I, I do like some of the stuff that we're seeing with Warmind. Specifically, I think you can look at Escalation Protocol as a great example of this. Mm-hmm. So when you go through that, not only do you have that sweet armor that's attached to that activity that you can get into and, and looks awesome on your Guardian, but the the specific guns that were created for that activity, the the Icolos guns mm-hmm. for the, the sniper rifle, the submachine gun, and the uh, shotgun, mm-hmm. those are sweet weapons with unique perks that you can only get from those weapons in that activity. And that's something that you really want to get in there and like work for. It's it's a tough activity, but the reward's worth it because you get a sweet ass weapon at the, at the mm-hmm. end of it that you can use for your guardian. So yep. um yeah, so stuff like that I think is is a good step in the right direction. Hopefully we'll see some more of that moving forward. So moving on from there, Brent, we've got some uh, crucible stuff we're gonna touch on quickly. So a little Q and A with with Derek. Um, sorry, what's this guy? Derek Carroll. Sorry. So a little Q&A with Derek Carroll on some of the, the burning crucible questions at the top of people's minds. We'll run through this quickly here. So now that we've added a serious ranking system to the competitive playlist, we're seeing many more Guardians attempt to climb the ladder to become legend, us included. Uh, <laughs> on their way to the top, some players have raised questions that we can address here. So why would I match against a player with a higher glory rank than me? For a variety of reasons, we don't match directly on your glory number, instead using our per playlist skill value. It's quite likely that your opponent is a good match against you, but they've been grinding glory more consistently, so have moved up the ranks faster. Take this as a sign you'll likely reach that rank with continued play. Why can't I match against preformed or why can I match against preformed fire teams when I am searching as a solo player? Something we've we've often talked about, mm-hmm. Brett. <clears throat> After a bit of server side tuning and investigation, we re enabled the Crucible Fire Team matchmaking feature yesterday when this was written, so this was a few days ago. Uh, this does not directly reduce the chances of matching against pre-made fire teams, but does tweak the skill values of those fire teams to make it more likely that they find evenly matched opponents. So, real quick, Brent, your your thoughts on that? So, uh, Bungie is matchmaking according to whatever, however they calculate this skill value based on their players right now. So, regardless of if you're in a clan or if you're in a full fire team, what your glory rank is, like. All that stuff's kind of uh, uh, arbitrary. It doesn't factor into this. What do you think about this idea that they're going after you with the skill-based matchmaking? I mean, I like the fact that they're, they're using skill level. I think that's important to come uh, to be a part of the equation. But again, I just they need to figure out a way to to break it up even more to where if you're playing solo, 
you're not getting paired up against squads. I understand mm-hmm. the skill system is there, and I appreciate that. I understand why that's there. Nobody wants to go in there and just keep housing teams over and over again, even though it sounds fun. I mean, that's going to help my glory rank out. But at the same <laughs> time, you know, skill, it has to be a balanced match. It has to be a good time because, you know, I mean, at the same time, I don't want to go in there against a bunch of high-level players and just get wrecked. But at the same time, I really want them to figure out a way to break it up where if you jump in, uh, as a as a single player, you're going to get matched up with other solo players. I mean, I just when when I jump into a match and I see a whole clan on the other side and just <laughs> a bunch of, of of like randos, I already know how this game's gonna play out. Usually, it doesn't play out well. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, there are some times though, man. We've jumped in there, and whether it was me and you or uh, just going solo with with a group of, of random people, there are times where you match against mm-hmm. that clan and you wreck those dudes, and you're like, yeah. Gotcha, <laughs> yeah, that's always nice. Um, but yeah, uh, that that is a rare occurrence. So that leads us to this question: Why won't you make a solo queue only playlist? Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the answer: We don't want to do that because it would split the population in an unhealthy way, making it less likely for everyone to find good matches. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, that would mean splitting the glory rank into solo glory and team glory right. numbers, which we'd much rather there be one single number to represent your prowess in the crucible. Quickly uh, on that, Brent, what's your thought on that answer? Yeah, and I mean, like I guess it's going to be very difficult for Bungie to find the perfect solution for this. Um, you know, nobody wants to see anybody get uh, a community get split up, especially in Crucible. You want to keep everybody in one big pool, mm-hmm. and you know, you don't want separate glory uh, lists. You don't want any of that jazz. You want to, I, I like it just one set thing. Yeah. And uh, so, like I said, when when you hear this, it, it just shows that this is not an easy fix. It's not an easy solution, and it's just something they're going to have to keep, continue to tinker with over the next couple months until they they get it as close to perfect as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, d- I don't want to see like their, them split mm-hmm. separate glory ranks. And all that. Like I, I like having one. There's already two ranks for glory and valor. You don't want right. to have a, a single glory, a team glory. That's just too much. Mm-hmm. So like, let's keep this all the same, and, and hopefully they just keep tweaking it. And you know, uh, we'll we'll see how it works. We um we'll be in the crucible quite a bit this season, and we'll uh, we'll see how the matchmaking you know that they said they've tweaked uh, kind of works out. Mm-hmm. Um, final question here on the, in terms of the Crucible. Why would you place me in a game in progress that you know I'm going to lose, ending my streak? So this is uh, just in terms of Valor. There's no join in progress in competitive, so this can't happen for Glory. However, we're working on a fix for Valor in the other playlist, so you won't lose your Valor streak that way. So that would that would be great. Good. If you get into a match in progress, you don't yeah, lose that Valor streak. <clears throat> mm-hmm. All right. So moving on from the Crucible... Uh, Segwaying into more Crucible here with the Iron Banner, Brent. Yes. Uh, Iron Banner returns this Tuesday, the first Iron Banner of Season 3. So the ways in which players earn rewards have also been updated for Season 3. Saladin will feature a similar reputation system to the Vanguard, where players can climb the ranks by turning in Iron Banner tokens. Each reputation rank will lend progress to unlocking desired rewards. So Brent... Uh, we know that Iron Banner is not going to be functioning the way that the other vendors do in the tower currently. Mm-hmm. There's going to be uh, you know, a whole ranking system where as you turn packages in, you rank up Saladin, and it will unlock the... He's got all of his weapons and stuff right at the bottom of his, of his, uh, of his vendor page there. So mm-hmm. as you unlock these rewards, you can go and just outright buy the gun that you want if you still haven't got it from the engram. Um, so what do you what do you think of this, Brent? Do you like this system? Do you like uh, what they're doing with the vendors just in general? Do you think that's going to translate well into the Iron Banner experience this year or this season? I think so because it gives you that opportunity to get the weapons that you aren't getting in drops. Um, because I mean that was something. I mean it took me until the very last moment to get Orman's Anvil, and I was yeah. very fortunate in that. So I think I like the fact that they're going to have this year because this, like I said, it gives you an opportunity to grab the weapons that you really want, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to hoping they drop in a, in, a, in an engram. Yeah. So I do like this system as well. I, I you know, we'll, obviously we'll see how it plays out across the season, but so far I think I like the way that that they're going with this. And of course, in addition to all the, you know, new uh, new Iron Banner rewards, and that's the thing, a whole new slate of guns here for season three. So I saw a rocket launcher in there. There's a uh, uh, the sidearm, um, mm-hmm. looks to be an auto rifle, a sniper rifle. Um, I can't remember everything that's in there. Yeah, there's a, an SMG and a hand cannon as SMG well. SMG and, and a hand cannon as well. So, um, so yeah, so a nice looking crop of guns there that uh, we're gonna eventually, hopefully, get our hands on. I still haven't got the damn Frost Myers X, so I'll be looking for that at some <laughs> point this this season as well. <clears throat> so that's one of the Iron Banner guns that has eluded me so far. And also, dude, 
the the ornaments for for Iron Banner this oh, season man. are, are kick ass. They look uh, they look really sweet. I love the ornaments from from season two. I'm wearing them right now on my guardian. I think they look badass as well. But mm-hmm. these ones also look look badass. I definitely want to get my hands on that. So, in addition to packages, in addition to weapons, and and all the the grinding that we're gonna be doing for that, we're gonna be grinding for these ornaments as well. So there's going to be a lot to do with Iron Banner in season three. Man, you uh, you pumped? You ready to get the short pause guardians together and just wreck house? I am on vacation this week, dude, so I will be going hard at Iron Banner. (laughs) Even when you guys aren't on during the day, I'm going hard at Iron Banner, dude. I'm getting those ornaments. I think those ornaments look fantastic, dude. The Hunter ornaments look awesome. So, yes, I'm going to be all over Iron Banner this week. I'll be on it during the day, and I'm going to be on it at night with 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 the Short Paws Guardian. So, I am hyped, dude. I love Iron Banner. Yeah. I do as well. Can't wait to. It's going to be a, a fun week. You can you can be sure that we'll be playing a lot of Iron Banner uh, this week with the with the Short Pause Guardians. Imagine our Wednesday stream will be will be uh, designed around that, and probably some other streams during the week. We'll be oh, playing, yeah. oh, playing yeah. Iron Banner as well. There'll be a lot of that to come. Uh, it, quickly, Brent, I want to touch on a couple of the uh, War Mind issues that are out there right now, just so players know what the status is with those and stuff that we're dealing with as well. So in terms of Heroic Strike progress and Boons of the Vanguard, progress towards the weekly Heroic Strikes milestone as well as toward some endgame quests will be blocked when players activate a Boon of the Vanguard. Hmm. Characters who enter this state will be unable to make progress on any pursuit that requires Heroic Strike completions until the Boon expires. As we continue to investigate this issue, we recommend that players save their Boons until after they have completed the pursuits mentioned above. So, do not activate Boons of the Vanguard. That's the moral of the story here. Save those until they've been fixed. And in terms of the Clan XP milestones and powerful gear, this is something that everybody's dealing with right now. So, please take note of this. Currently, players are not receiving powerful gear from Hawthorne when completing and turning a weekly Clan XP milestone. Players can work around this issue by completing the Clan XP milestone, then waiting for the next weekly reset to pass. After the next week starts, the previous week's milestone will auto-decrypt and correctly award powerful gear. So, please keep that in mind if you are uh, in the midst of of Destiny 2 right now. When you get that Clan engram, do not uh, 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 go in and get it decrypted. Wait until mm-hmm. the reset happens. It'll auto decrypt. And when you go back into your inventory, you'll have a, an item that has the proper power level. So I imagine this will be fixed uh, either next week with a hot fix or with that May 29th update. But until mm-hmm. then, uh, just keep that in mind. I mean, I'm not too sure about those uh, heroic strikes being blocked by the Boon of the Vanguard because I don't, I haven't used a Boon of the Vanguard. And you know, I was mentioning that quest line that I have right now. The I think it's called Glory of the War Mind. Yeah. And uh, I okay. have to complete five heroic strikes, and you and I knocked out three the other night for the for the mm-hmm. for the milestone. None yeah. of those registered. Really, none of those registered towards that quest line. Huh. So I, I want to look at it today. It says zero for five, and we wow. knocked out three of them. Hmm. Do uh, you didn't have a boon active or anything? Nope. Hmm. Do you no have boons? Do you have maybe one in your inventory that you haven't uh, accepted yet, like a gift that's sitting in there that maybe you have to. Um, mm. I can check, but I'm pretty sure I okay. don't have any gifts. I think I. And it's just yeah. it's just really strange. So I I think it's still I think there. I mean, there's been issues with the the tracking of heroic strikes, uh, you, you know, since 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 this update came out. So okay. I'm not too sure it's still solely tied to the boon. I still think there's probably some issues at hand uh, that they're still going to have to tweak out because clearly it's not registering those heroic strikes for me, gotcha. which is weird because it, it registered for the milestone. Yeah, but it didn't it didn't register for the quest line, which is just really strange. Hmm. Yeah, so clearly some issues there with the heroic strike uh, in terms of progression on these quests. So, mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully they they get that fixed sooner rather than later. Uh, hoping for a, a hot fix next week, but maybe they're already tinkering with the heroic strikes for the May 29th update. So I think it's a safe bet that we can at least expect something at at that point. So mm-hmm. we'll uh, we'll keep our eye on it though. Then a uh, final thing we want to mention here, Brent. We just want to touch on this because we mentioned this on on the last tower talk. But this uh, this idea of Rasputin's puzzle in his bunker. Mm-hmm. That's uh you know that that. The uh, the hardcore destiny discovered this puzzle and they're like, all right, let's get our let's get our thinking caps on, let's get in here and Morse code, binary code, whatever. We'll, we'll figure <laughs> we'll figure out whatever this entails. But uh, this is pretty neat, man. So the destiny community, they got in there, they've they've solved this puzzle uh, somehow, some way. I have no idea how these guys do it. I don't even know how Bungie comes up with these puzzles to begin with. Like I, like I don't know how people's minds <laughs> work like this, but they've. The the destiny um you know the the raid se- secret 
Reddit or whatever, whoever these people are. Raid Secrets subreddit. Mm-hmm. That's the people. They uh, they get together. They they get it, dig into these hard ass puzzles and they figure out what's going on. But they've solved the Rasputin one, and it actually led to a real life reward, a real life treasure that was sitting out in New York. So, uh, just want to touch on this so we can wrap a bow on on this. Um, but the puzzle, which started off as a symbol within the AI Rasputin's bunker in the newest expansion, and turned out to be an elaborate cipher, required a massive crowdsourcing effort to solve. Different members of the Raid Secret subreddit were able to piece together different parts of the puzzle using the symbols to determine code words like reverse and enlightenment. And then Reddit rand- Redditor Randomizer <coughs> solved the cipher late last night, this was earlier in the week, posting that it had all led to a secret message. And this message reads as follows. Thank you for taking the time to piece together this message, friend. The time of our final conflict is drawing closer and you and Anna have an important role to play in the events to come. So watch over her, Guardian. I would have no life without Anna or the EXO program. I regret that we have become strangers, but we each have a path that we must walk, and ironically, there never seems to be enough time. <laughs> Tell her Rasputin's first attempt was in the right location, but the wrong moment. Look here. Then it gives a set of coordinates, and it's signed E. And this is the interesting part of this, Brent. So longtime Destiny fans may get a kick out of the fact that E is Elsie Bray, mm-hmm. sister of Anna Bray, who is it's now clear is the stranger from the first game. Yep. You know the one who told us that she didn't have time to explain why she didn't have time to explain. <laughs> yep. As she mentions in her message there, ironically, there never seems to be enough time. We haven't seen her since those first days of Destiny 1, so this is a neat throwback. Uh, lore bombs aside, those coordinates were the real discovery, leading to Sleeping Beauty Mountain in upstate New York. Vicarious Visions, the lead developer of Warm Mind, is also in upstate New York, so it's safe to assume that wasn't a coincidence. I'm in Saratoga County, wrote Redditor I Love Science, on my way. When I Love Science got there, he found this cache. So it's a, 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 a tube with the Warmind logo on it laid under some sticks in this park. Inside was an incredible treasure, a spear based on the Valkyrie, a weapon you can find and temporarily use during missions and activities in Warmind. Wow. It's a badass weapon. There was also a box of gold coins along with instructions asking the finder to only take one, a set of notes, and a journal for recording visitors. The note from Warmind lead design Rob Gallerani encouraged the finders to share photos of this discovery and told them that there are only three spears like that in existence. One at Vicarious Visions, one at Bungie, and this one here in, uh, in upstate New York. While it's a shame that the spear can't go to all of the intrepid secret hunters who collaborated to find this, it's wonderful to see a destiny that's full of mystery once more. Reading from the Kotaku article here. So Brent, just wanted to mention this because we talked about the the puzzle here, uh, you know, uh, previously on Tower Talk. But I think this is this is really cool, man. So not only did this lead to a, a real life puzzle, uh, a real life treasure for these guys to find, but we also know that the stranger is now Elsie Bray, which is a a Destiny mystery that's been lingering for the last four years. So it's a nice little piece of story for the hardcore Destiny fans to kind of wrap their heads around as well. How, how'd you think about this, man, and how it all played out? That's one of the coolest things I've I've heard a developer do in a long time. I mean, the yeah. fact that they have this thing hidden out in the woods, you know, they <laughs> hid it out in the middle of nowhere, yeah. and they have they let the community uh, you know dive into this puzzle, and they have somebody solve, it, and somebody close enough is able to make the drive there and actually grab this spear. And like they mentioned, there's only two, three of them in the world. Mm-hmm. One of them at Vicarious Visions, one of them at Bungie, and and, and this dude here who found it. Mm-hmm. So that is really really cool. I think that is awesome, and I just love when developers do this stuff that's kind of outside of the game, even though it's a part of the game. I mm-hmm. think that's really really cool. Yeah, and I, uh, possibly my favorite part for me is just the fact that they tied it into that mystery with the stranger. Now yeah. that we know that that's that's Elsie, that's Anna's sister, and she survived only because she was a part of the EXO program and got her consciousness downloaded into that exit or however, however that works. You know, maybe one day we'll mm-hmm. learn the story of exactly how that played out. But that's uh that's really cool to know that that's who the stranger is. And, and now that we know that, you know, maybe she reappears at some point in the future. Now that she has a close connection to Anna. Possibly. We'll have to, we'll have to see how it all plays up. Yeah. I, th- I thought that was really neat. And that's just one of the cool things that, uh, that the destiny <laughs> community has that, that a lot of other people like can't, can't claim or a lot of other communities can't claim something like this is not something you'd see in most video game communities so mm-hmm. uh bravo to bungie bravo to vicarious visions for doing stuff like this and hopefully we see more of this and um it just ties into the all the mystery that kind of surrounds the war mind expansion so um i dig it well with that brent that is going to do it for this uh beefy episode of tower talk we had a lot of stuff to discuss with the with the update and with the uh road map um so let's put a bow on this our, our twitter handles are right underneath us www.shortpause.com is the website 
So make sure you're coming on over there, following us at the short pause on Twitter. Uh, we'll be back next week, I'm sure, with another episode of Tower Talk. Like I said, I'm expecting this week at Bungie next week to be uh, in- incredibly dense as well as they talk mm-hmm. about everything that's going into that May 29th update. So Brett and I will be back. Maybe somebody else will join us. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see how everything plays out. But we'll be back next week to talk some more Tower Talk. So if you like what we do here, like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you guys. But thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. See you later.